All right, to be mindful of everyone's time, let's get started now. I want to thank you all for for hopping on um, this during today's web for today's webinar. For those of you who are in the U.S., I hope you had a nice Labor Day weekend. And for uh, those that are in other time zones, we appreciate you spending your Tuesday with us as well. Um, I do want to welcome you all to the using the solid waste management toolkit to address plastic waste in your community webinar. This webinar provides an overview of plastic waste management strategies for developing countries and highlights EPA's solid waste management toolkit, which includes resources related to solid waste management, including plastic waste. This webinar is being hosted by the US Environmental Protection Agency in collaboration with the International Solid Waste Association. My name is Katie Tobin. I'm with Apt Associates, a contractor to EPA. I'll be emceeing the beginning portion of this webinar to ensure we are all comfortable with the WebEx platform and so that I can introduce you to a few folks who are instrumental in planning for this webinar. Before we start, I want to go over a few webinar software tips. Um, first, there are two ways to connect with the audio today. You can either listen through your computer speakers or use the number posted on the webinar slide. All participant lines will be muted for the duration of the webinar, regardless of the audio method. We will also be recording today's session with the intention to post the materials to the EPA website. We will be using three panels for today's web webinar, the participant panel, the question and answer panel, and Slido. All of these panels can be found on the right-hand side of your screen. You may need to click the arrow next to the desired panel to expand and see all the content. If for some reason one of the panels does not appear, navigate to the bottom right of your screen and click on the panels you are missing. We will be utilizing several polls during today's webinar. When each poll is activated, the poll should appear on the right-hand side of your screen. You may need to open the Slido panel if you do not see the polls automatically. Please select your answer and submit it for each poll. In some instances, two polling questions will appear at the same time. In that instance, scroll down and read and, and respond to both. The answers will be visible in real time to the audience if you answer the poll, but your names will not be included. If you have any technical or software questions during today's webinar, you can enter questions into the Q&A panel. When submitting questions, please select all panelists from the drop-down menu before hitting send. This will ensure that all of the speakers see your question and can respond accordingly. Next slide, Abby, thank you. To participate in the discussion, we will be using the raise hand feature. You may raise your hand using the button on the top right of your bottom of the screen next to your mute button and the reactions. Or you can raise your hand using the bot button next to your name in the participants panel. If you wish to speak during the discussion, you may raise your hand and we will call on you and unmute your line. After your question is answered, please click the raise hand button again to put your hand down. Questions will be moderated at the end of the webinar during the Q&A session. Final materials will be posted to the EPA website. With that, I would like to use a few more moments to highlight some key people from both EPA and ISWA. Carlos is the ISWA president that many of you actually may already be familiar with. He is an attorney at law and a member of the UN Secretary General Advisory Board on Zero Waste. He is a member of multiple steering committees, including on for the Global Waste Management Outlook and the Coalition for Progression Cl Closures of Dump Sites in Latin America and the Caribbean. Carlos has experience as a coordinator and implementer of several projects related to waste management, waste strategies, regulation, public-private partnerships, and marine litter. Finally, he is an author of two books on waste. Carlos, thank you for being with us today. I would like to pass the mic off to you for a few words. Thank you very much, Catherine. It's a great pleasure to be here with you all today. Good morning, good afternoon, or even good evening, depending on where you are uh, uh, joining us. And uh, I'm really happy to join this uh, webinar today to really introduce some of the good work ISVA is caring about uh, uh, representing the solid waste industry worldwide and also being an active uh, a contributor to the International Negotiating Committee for the uh, Plastic Treaty, as it's being done. Uh, so uh, I'd like to introduce ISVA as uh, uh, the global, the leading network uh, promoting professional and sustainable waste and resource 
management and supporting the transition to a circular economy. We, as an international association funded in the 1970, uh, uh, ISO represents all aspects and stakeholders within the waste management sector. And we have currently more than a thousand members in uh, 109 countries and 47 national members, uh, which are really the, the representatives of ISVA in, in the different countries. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, in, in summary, ISVA is a global waste management network that works together with its members, with several partners, for a cleaner, healthier, and sustainable planet. Next, please. Uh, and uh, considering a global association, we need to be aware of what's happening globally and we intend to be active and influential on this uh, uh, international and global agenda. So, uh, uh, when I took over the, the office as ISVA president, we launched the report, The Future of Waste Management, considering the trends and opportunities uh, for the waste sector within this decade. Why did we choose uh, uh, this decade? Because this is uh, 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 the, the window for us to really be uh, uh, implementing positive actions in order to achieve the sustainable develop development goals so for the 2030 agenda. Uh, we also started with some position papers uh, uh, dealing with plastic pollution, uh, develop a declaration on climate change, uh, uh, which has been presented uh, during the, the, the past COPs. And for the first time ever, we'll be hosting the Waste and Resources uh, Pavilion at COP28 later this year in, in Dubai. Uh, for the INC process, the Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee on Plastic Pollution, uh, we established a, an internal task force, a task force on plastic pollution, which is open for any uh, participant who is interested to join more information on the website. Uh, we were present on both uh, meetings, both sessions of the INC. The first one last year in December uh, in uh, Punta del Este uh, in Uruguay. The second one this year uh, in Paris, uh, early June. And we are heading to INC 3 to be held in Nairobi mid-November. And uh, breaking news for today, the zero draft of the uh, text uh, for what is supposed to be this international legally binding instrument has just been published at the INC website. So it's a milestone document. It has been uh, uh, prepared since last uh, session of INC2. And now we have a text we have a substantive matter to deal with and to contribute. So uh, we are willing to host another side event uh, during INC. Uh, we hosted a, a side event in INC2 in Paris, and we are willing to host another side event during INC3 in order to raise the voice, to raise the profile of the waste and resources management. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as a matter of a, a, a substance, this is a, a kind of like a, a summary of the event we organized in, in Paris together with our national member in France and the French Waste Partnership. It was uh, 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 well attended and really uh, pro, uh, produced very interesting discussions. Next slide, please. And uh, there as well, we launched a, a summary publication uh, with the key elements to beat plastic pollution. And uh, uh, this publication addressed reduction uh, measures, circularity, sound waste management, governance and funding, and sustainable communities. Next slide, please. So, uh, 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 we also uh, presented our uh, principles or our suggestion for uh, principles for the Plastic Treaty, considering collaboration, innovation, research and development, awareness raising and equity as a basic principles in order to have an effective uh, uh, treaty. So, we are really moving forward. We look uh, 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 to the participation for all the interested and uh, uh, also considering the fruitful discussion for the webinar today uh, in which we have this uh, 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 report uh, publication from EPA with waste management tools, 
uh, applied to uh, uh, defeat plastic pollution, which is, which is one of our uh, biggest challenges uh, currently. So thank you very much for your attention and look forward uh, to the discussion that uh, uh, will come ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. We really appreciate the time you and your team um, have put into this webinar. Lastly, we want to highlight Katie Blinder, who is with the EPA Office of Resource Conservation and Recovery. Katie has been instrumental in the development of the toolkit resources you will be hearing about today. She specializes in the implementation of the notice consent process for U.S. imports and exports of hazardous waste. Katie was a Peace Corps volunteer in Peru, working with municipal and local level officials to design and carry out education and employability programming for the youth. She's graduated from the University of California, Los Angeles in 2018 with a BA in political science and a concentration in international relations. Katie will be taking the mic from here and guiding us through the webinar content. Katie, I'd like to hand it off to you. Hey, thank you so much, Katie, for that introduction. Uh, good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending on your time zone. It's great to be here with you all today. I'm very much looking forward to this session and the discussion to come. I want to give a big thank you as well to Carlos and everyone at ISWA for um, partnering with us to host this webinar and thank everyone at APT Associates at, as well for um, their efforts in developing this session with us. Um, yeah, very much looking forward to it. And with that, I'm gonna jump into the first part of our presentation. And so to begin today, we're going to start with a few polling questions to get a sense of who's in the audience with us today. Um, so if you all could take a look at the right-hand panel uh, of your screen and fill out our first question, which is what is your industry or field of work? I'll give everyone a moment to fill that out. All right. And at this time as well, I'm going to uh, stop my video just to conserve bandwidth and keep us focused on the slides. Um, please continue filling out. Um, great. All right. I'm seeing a lot of responses coming in already. Great to see who we have on the call today. Looks like we have a lot of you working as a federal or national employee and a lot of people. Well, we've got a mix of a lot of a lot of different people, so that's great. I think this is going to contribute to a great discussion um, later in the session. All right. Great. We've got a lot of consultants on the line as well. It looks like for um, our other. All right, moving on to our next question. Um, the next couple of questions that we have, we'd like to know what country do you primarily work in and how familiar are you with how plastic waste is managed in your country or region? And you can rate your knowledge from one to five, one being no knowledge currently and five being expert knowledge. Great, thank you everyone for your responses. It looks like we've got many different regions and countries of the world represented today. So that's really great to see. Again, I think that's gonna to contribute to a great discussion later on. All right, and we've got a lot of people that have very strong knowledge of plastic waste in their country or region already. It's great to see. Give everyone a few more moments to fill out these questions. All right, moving on to our next polling question. We'd like to know from you, what do you hope to learn from this webinar? And feel free to select all that apply. Uh, and we'd also like to know what key challenges are you facing in addressing plastic waste in your community or place of work? And again, feel free to select all that apply. Great. 
Great, a lot of people looking for useful resources. A lot of people looking for a plastic waste overview. That's great to see. I think we will definitely be addressing both of those in our presentation today. All right, and we've got a mixture of different challenges that folks are facing. So it'll be great to hear a bit more about that in the discussion portion. You'll all have space to talk a bit more about some of these challenges that you're seeing and exchange some ideas. All right, it looks like our meeting. Okay, great. Thank you everyone for answering those questions as well. This was super interesting to see as we head into our presentation. And with that, we're going to jump into it. Um, we're going to start by reviewing the agenda and learning objectives for this webinar. So after reviewing the learning objectives, we're going to provide an overview of the solid waste management toolkit and highlight specifically the addressing plastic waste companion chapter. Um, then we'll be discussing the basics of what plastic waste is. So providing you with that overview, why solid waste management professionals should address it and opportunities for solving challenges. Next, we're gonna be covering topics related to addressing plastic waste in your region, including how to address plastic waste in your region using the Solid Waste Management Toolkit. Finally, we will be conducting a facilitated discussion on these topics. And um, I'll note that there'll be some additional poll questions throughout the training so that we can get you know, some feedback and uh, some insight from all of you as well. So for our learning objectives, this training is intended to give ISWA members an introduction to plastic waste management and existing resources on the topic. At its conclusion, you should understand how to use these resources to create and support projects in your region, as well as understand the challenges and successes of fellow members in this training. So now jumping into the resource that we're going to be covering today, we have EPA's Solid Waste Management Toolkit. And to give a bit of context on this tool, as we're all aware, solid waste management is a growing issue globally. So US EPA developed the Solid Waste Management Toolkit in the spirit of exchanging information and best practices to address common waste management challenges. The intent behind the tool is to share the principles that underpin EPA's waste management strategy, while recognizing that the solutions that work in the United States may not work in all countries. And therefore, the toolkit provides broad best practices for decision makers in developing countries that can be adapted and molded to fit the particular country or regional context. And US EPA is continuing to evolve and improve our waste management practices. And we look forward to learning from all of you, from our international partners. And we hope that you'll find the toolkit to be a useful reference or something that you can share with others working in the field. And as always, we warmly welcome your feedback on the tool. So with that, to share a bit about um, what is in our solid waste management toolkit, it includes a large selections of resources, including the best practices for solid waste management, a guide for decision makers in developing countries, which we refer to as the guide. And it also includes four new companion chapters. The companion chapters cover the topics of addressing plastic waste, equity in solid waste management, recycling markets, and solid waste management and climate change. In addition to the guide and companion chapters, the toolkit also offers e-learning modules available in several languages, along with videos which help explain the materials. Video topics include waste collection, route optimization, organic waste treatment modules, and more. The toolkit serves as a free resource for decision makers implementing solid waste management programs. And throughout this presentation, I wanna note that you'll notice a light bulb icon in the top right of a given slide, as you see here. This light bulb indicates a reference to a specific resource in the toolkit based on the content on the given slide so that you know where you can refer back to for more information. 
Now, the toolkit is applicable to many audiences involved in waste management and includes best practices and policy discussions, international case studies, and resources, all tailored for an audience of decision makers and organizations working on waste management in their respective organizations. Working with stakeholders helps create a robust solid waste management system, protect the environment, and make cities better places to live. Stakeholder engagement is the process of building relationships with residents, interest groups, and other impacted entities in order to gain support for solid waste management policies, programs, and service issues. The best practices for solid waste management, a guide for decision makers in developing countries, is focused on best practices for solid waste management in medium and large urban centers in developing countries. Portions of the guide might also be applicable to rural towns, villages, or other small jurisdictions. The guide documents best practices from around the globe to provide decision makers with information and resources. The guide leverages experience from multiple international waste management experts and organizations, and it includes sections on stakeholder engagement, separation, collection, and transportation, organic waste management, dump site management, and much more. And I'll note that the guide is not intended to be a step-by-step -step implementation manual, but it does highlight resources that local authorities and decision makers can refer to for more detailed technical guidance. The guide presents decision makers with the information and resources to improve solid waste management within the context of their given situation. And the guide is currently available in English, Spanish, French, Arabic, Indonesian, Thai, and Vietnamese. So we do have it available in a variety of languages. The guide includes a number of features which make it easy to use and provide value to decision makers. Case and points and case studies share examples of projects or activities from around the world. Best practices highlight solid waste management options and benefits. And finally, questions for decision makers are provided to consider when evaluating options for improving solid waste management. Similar features can also be found in the four companion chapters, which will be described in a few slides. Uh, to highlight the e-learning modules and videos, these complement the toolkit and allow users to explore specific topics from the toolkit in a more interactive and in a user-friendly manner. The modules and videos are mobile friendly and can be used with lower internet bandwidth. And each module and video discusses and includes links to case studies and guide sections, which allows users to learn at their own pace and explore different aspects of the toolkit. The modules are currently available in English, Spanish, French, and Arabic. So to go back to the companion chapters that I mentioned earlier, the toolkit includes four companion chapters to supplement the guide and other priority topics. The chapters include equity in solid waste management, which defines equity in the solid waste management sector, discusses the challenges that contribute to an equitable solid waste management and the resulting impacts, and provides an overview of best practices for addressing inequities while improving solid waste management. Solid Waste Management and Climate Change chapter discusses how solid waste contributes to climate change, best practices to reduce emissions from waste, um, and also how climate change impacts solid waste management, and it provides strategies for building a climate resilient solid waste management system. Our Recycling Markets chapter summarizes the benefits, challenges, and best practices for cities to identify and facilitate recycling market development when planning and implementing recycling programs. And finally, the Addressing Plastic Waste Companion Chapter, which is the focus of this presentation, provides an overview of the impacts and challenges of plastic waste management, the benefits of properly managing plastic waste, and best practices for recovering and incorporating waste back into the value chain. Throughout this presentation, uh, we will be highlighting the content and resources available in the Addressing, Plate, Addressing Plastic Waste Companion chapter to illustrate how the chapter and the toolkit can be used to inform direct action. So first, we're going to start with a background on understanding plastic waste. So here we will provide an overview of plastic waste, the various impacts it has on the environment, human health, and socioeconomic resources, and what opportunities ex exist for addressing it. Some of this content may be familiar to our audience. I know a lot of you have said that you already have a strong uh, 
background and understanding of plastic waste. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to uh, find this overview to be useful to sort of ground the rest of our presentation. So this slide covers the current global challenges of dealing with plastic waste to emphasize the scale of the issue. So plastic waste can intentionally or unintentionally leak into the environment during production, consumption, and disposal phases of the product life cycle, the leakage of most common at the end of its useful life. Globally, around 400 million tons of plastic waste are produced annually, yet only 15% of plastic products were collected for recycling in 2019. Once plastic waste is in the environment, it becomes plastic pollution. Plastic waste is disposed of at a facility or waste receptacle, whereas plastic pollution is intentionally or unintentionally disposed of into the environment. Plastic pollution can originate from leakage of resin pellets during production, mismanaged waste, that is waste collected but improperly or illegally disposed of, or waste that's not collected in areas where solid waste management services exist. Litter, which could be, uh, which are items discarded in the environment. Abrasion, which would be wear and tear. And losses of microplastics, industrial and marine activities, catastrophic events, urban and stormwater runoff and washing machine wastewater. Leakage can also clog sewers and drainage systems resulting in flooding and breeding grounds for disease. Plastic consumption is expected to triple and plastic leakage is expected to double by 2060. Finally, inclusive of all of these impacts, manufacturing of virgin materials accounts for 50% of all greenhouse gas emissions and 90% of all biodiversity loss and water stress. So with that, now that we've looked at the global scale of the issue, we're going to address some of the specific impacts of plastic waste. So what are the impacts of plastic waste? The impacts of plastic waste can be described in terms of environmental impacts, human health impacts, and socioeconomic impacts. Environmental impacts include threats to marine life through ingestion, suffocation, and entanglement, as well as greenhouse gas emissions from production of plastic. Research has indicated that more than 1,500 species in marine and terrestrial environments are known to ingest plastics. And microplastics may reduce the ability of animals to digest food, leading to intestinal blockage, starvation, and internal injury. The human health impacts are also numerous. Uh, this includes exposure to microplastics. Once in the environment, plastic pollution can fragment into smaller pieces of plastic. Plastic particles less than five millimeters in size in one dimension are called microplastics. And microplastics have been found in human livers, kidneys, and placentas. However, more research is needed to understand the, the exact human health impacts of microplastics. Um, another uh, very critical impact is exposure to chemical additives, so carcinogenic chemicals found in plastics leach into tap water, which may cause developmental, reproductive, neurological, and immune disorders. Uh, plastic pollution also le can lead to the spread of infectious diseases. Plastic pollution, such as single-use plastic bags, can clog sewers, which provides a breeding ground for mosquitoes and pests and increases the risk of malaria and malaria disproportionately impacts the World Health Organization African region, where over 95% of malaria cases and deaths occur. Um, additionally, air pollution from waste burning can have very negative impacts on human health. Open burning or uncontrolled incineration of waste emits carcinogens, such as dioxins, furans, and black carbon, which pose health risks to humans, animals, and the environment. And the third uh, in category of impacts, the socioeconomic impacts of plastic pollution, uh, account for over 2.2 trillion US dollars in damages per year. And that includes uh, 1,500 billion in ocean damage, 695 billion in greenhouse gas emissions, and 25 billion in land pollutants. Um, reductions in plastic waste and the associated environmental and health costs would save governments, individuals, and communities money from waste mitigation programs 
the impacts of pollution, disease, and health impacts, and provide improvements in economies such as tourism, fisheries, and agriculture. So, with all that being said, what opportunities are there to address plastic waste? We're going to be examining these on the next slide. And just pointing you to our light bulbs, you're going to be seeing a lot more of these in the, in the coming slides, but keep an eye out for them. As I mentioned earlier, um, these will be highlighting the areas within our toolkit where you can go for more information. Um, so opportunities from addressing plastic waste. While the challenges and impacts of plastic waste are numerous, there are many opportunities that come, that come with addressing this issue. Recycling and reuse of plastic and other waste not only reduces the impacts associated with pollution and virgin manufacturing, but also comes with several economic and social benefits. Recycling promotes a circular economy where products are reused or recovered, contributes to the creation of jobs, wages, and tax revenue for cities, and supports economic development associated with these efforts. For additional information on real world examples of plastic waste management in action, you can view the recorded guide webinar online, which features innovative approaches to plastic waste from India and Brazil. And you can access the webinar recordings through the toolkit webpage. So now we're going to be discussing how to use the toolkit resources to address plastic waste in your region. In this section, we'll be covering the steps needed to identify, plan, and implement and study plastic waste issues. And we'll also discuss challenges, best practices, and solutions uh, for plastic waste management. So we have a couple more polling questions for you all um, to start this section. What plastic waste issues are you aware of in your region or community? And you can feel free to type your responses into the text box. Um, see, we have I'll give everyone a few moments to respond. We have a few responses coming in. I see um Collection infrastructure is an issue, microplastic in oceans and LDPE films, plastic water and beaches, lack of policy and education, technical know how, regulations and funds. All right, thank you everyone for sharing this with us. This will be great to discuss further in our facilitated discussion at the end of the session. Give everyone a few moments. All right. Thank you everyone for your responses to this question. Um, very interesting to see what issues you're all noticing in your regions and communities and definitely look forward to uh, hearing more from you all in our discussion. All right, so moving to our next poll questions, what stakeholders in your region are currently engaged with this topic? Uh, you can select all that apply, and then which stakeholders are missing in your region that are needed to fully address plastic waste. And again, feel free to select all that apply. We'll give everyone a few moments to respond. All right, great. Looks like 
a lot of engagement at the local government level and the national and subnational government level, and academic institutions as well. It's great to see um, a lot of engagement across uh, many different sectors. Private companies, a lot of engagement as well. Oh, that's what's missing. All right, let's see we've moved on. So missing, we're missing private companies, residential waste generators. All right, thank you everyone for your responses to that. Okay. So thank you for your responses to the poll questions. Uh, next, we're going to be discussing some strategies for addressing plastic waste in your region. And these key steps are adapted from section five of the guide here we had adapted the steps to address plastic waste specifically. These steps offer a broad lens to strategically plan and consider plastic waste issues. In the following slides, we will describe various examples of how to use these strategies, but they should be considered illustrative and not exhaustive. No one approach will always be right for individual plastic waste issues in different regions and careful analysis of the situation should inform any project. Stakeholders can implement a range of projects from an educational campaign focused on reducing plastic bag usage to a school-wide recycling competition. Evaluation and planning are critical steps for cities that are looking to create or evaluate a system for addressing plastic waste. These steps can be implemented at different levels. For example, the steps can be used to implement a community-scale project while government officials could carry out these steps at a regional level. In the following slides, we will cover these steps, including examples of potential activities. So the first step is assessing the current plastic waste landscape. It is important to have a comprehensive picture of what is happening in your region that affects plastic waste, including the amount and type of waste produced, residents and waste generators understanding of their impact, and the influential stakeholders to the issue. Here we describe three ways in which you can begin to assess the current plastic waste landscape in your region. So baseline data gathering commonly includes conducting a waste audit, sometimes known as a waste characterization, by taking samples of waste and analyzing the amounts and types of materials being disposed of. It is possible to gather valuable data on your local situation. Another type of waste audit is a brand audit, where the amount and types of waste are also ca categorized by the manufacturer or brand that produces them, enabling you to understand who is responsible for the production of local plastic waste. Surveys and interviews can provide crucial qualitative data on what residents and bulk waste generators know about, about plastic waste situation, how they interact, how they interpret or follow or ignore existing regulations, and what barriers or challenges they may have in increasing their participation in plastic waste reduction efforts. Another strategy that can be used to assess the state of plastic waste resources is mapping plastic waste stakeholders. Having proper stakeholder buy-in is essential for successful plastic waste projects, and taking time to map known stakeholders in your community or region will help determine where there are opportunities for collaboration and or gaps. Step number two, the next step is identifying what is needed to address plastic waste. Stakeholders can use the collected data in step one to help assess their needs to address plastic waste. These needs should reflect present day realities. Cities should consider future changes such as population growth, consumption trends, and waste generation rates. One method to identify what is needed to address plastic waste in a community or region is to review common challenges and analyze which may be contributing to or creating plastic waste issues. Common general challenges include weak strategic planning, lack of solid waste management systems and infrastructure, high cost of collection and transportation, shortage of funding, 
and legal constraints and limited enforcement. In the addressing plastic waste chapter, we've taken it a step further and identified specific challenges related to plastic waste across production, consumption, and behavior, management of plastic waste, and secondary material market development. For each challenge, we've identified relevant solutions across regulation and policy, behavioral change in education, partnerships, and technology and infrastructure. Here you can see an example of a challenge highlighted in the matrix along with examples of solutions. The solutions listed here are not comprehensive, so we encourage you all to review the matrix in the chapter for additional examples and resources. So moving to step three, the slide covers setting goals and objectives. Goals and objectives establish a clear vision for the development of a plastic waste management system. Goal statements can include the value and roles of different stakeholders, including stakeholders like youth groups or residents. An important piece and execution of policies or educational campaigns focused on plastic waste. And these stakeholders can also partner to fund and manage new infrastructure and technology. Partnerships are also critical to developing and expanding markets for plastic waste. Um, all right, sorry about that. I had moved on to a different section. Um, moving back to this setting goals and objectives, it can be helpful to create goals and evaluate priorities using the SMART goals method, which ensures that options are specific, which is detailed and specifies what will be, what will be achieved. Measurable, they have associated metrics or measures of success. Attainable, appropriately challenging, objectives can be reasonably obtained given the available resources. Relevant, they align with the policy program goal and are appropriate within the country or beneficiary audience. And they're timely, so achievable within the time frame of the program. Uh, goals that involve improving the current plastic waste management system adding to a specific element or developing a new product or a service. Um, this slide has an example of a SMART goal using one of the challenges from the challenges and solution matrix. So the example that we've pulled for this slide is um, the SMART goal would be improve our understanding of plastic waste by increasing data quantity and quality on the subject. So over the next two years, we will collect 10 waste samples a year from each city uh, city neighborhood and analyze them for waste amount, material type, and degree of separation. Share the data collected each year with stakeholders in the public and integrate data into solid waste management decision making to inform recycling targets, program strategy, and measures of success. So this is just an example of one SMART goal that we pulled, but you can look at the guide um, to sort of think through some other similar scenarios or challenges you may be facing and um, leverage the same strategy. All right, so moving on to step four, we're going to discuss evaluating options for plastic waste projects. So no one solution can solve the global plastic waste issue. As mentioned, it's important to consider all stages of the recycling system, including collection, management, and disposal. Further, it's critical for cities to increase collection and separation of materials. Strengthening provision of collection services, especially in rural areas, can help cities collect waste and prevent leakage into the environment. Enhancing separation efforts can help cities recycle more plastic waste and increase the value of recycled plastics. And several factors impact successful implementation of plastic waste strategies, including geography, financial, and political constraints. Many cities find that a combination of strategies is most beneficial to addressing plastic waste, including um, regulation and policy. So cities can set targets or laws to limit plastic usage, encourage proper disposal of plastic waste, and phase out the most problematic plastic. Mandates to require data reporting are examples of mechanisms cities can use to manage plastic waste. Uh, additionally, behavioral change and educational campaigns, changing consumer behaviors and educating people about the negative impacts 
of plastic pollution can lower plastic consumption, lower contamination in the recycling stream, and lead to enhanced management of plastic waste. Partnerships, non-governmental organizations, local governments, the informal waste sector, businesses, and other societal stakeholders can work together to maximize public awareness and execution of policies or educational campaigns focused on plastic waste. These stakeholders can also partner to fund and manage new infrastructure and technology. Partnerships are also critical to developing and expanding markets for plastic waste. Um, technology and infrastructure. Technology can refer to basic infrastructure such as recycling, cans to more complicated technology requiring subject matter expertise to use such as computer programs. Access to an investment in locally appropriate technology and infrastructure can help cities better manage plastic waste and increase the value of recycled plastics. Innovation of new environmentally sound technologies can help prevent, uh, collect, reuse, and recycle more plastic waste through machine learning to sort plastic waste, blockchain tools to foster recycling, washing bags to filter microplastics, and autonomous leakage removal systems. Investing in locally appropriate technology can aid in the development of sanitary landfills and increase closure of open dump sites. The next few slides will be discussing these strategies in detail, including common challenges as well as best practices and solutions. So regulation of plastic waste and creation of policies is a vital aspect of any solid waste management program. Not all policies will work for each context, so it's important to carefully consider the options available and the desired outcomes. Challenges include lack of enforcement. Policies are less effective without proper enforcement. However, penalty too stringent may not be as effective in changing behaviors or may lead to a lack of enforcement due to the harsh nature of the penalty. Uh, lack of infrastructure. Um, lack of infrastructure. Many cities do not have solid waste management systems set up to handle plastic waste. Uh, timing is another major issue. It's important to allow enough time between announcement and implementation of a product ban. Without enough lag time, plastic manufacturers, retail businesses, and consumers may struggle to adapt to the new policy. Economic factors, uh, so job loss, business closures, loss of export revenue, and higher operational costs for local manufacturers are all potential challenges cities may face when instituting a product ban. Um, additionally, bans on single-use plastics may have unintended consequences for neighboring cities. Increased plastic consumption may redirect nearby cities without bans or export uh, of plastic waste may shift to less regulated cities. So for the best practice and solutions regarding regulation and policy, um, this can include product bans. Many cities have found it helpful to address plastic waste by banning certain products such as plastic bags, straws, and cutlery to be a Effective, it's important that cities not only enforce product bans, but also provide complementary educational resources on the need for the product ban and offer alternative product suggestions. Uh, additionally, recycling laws and incentives. These can either directly require certain materials to be recycled, such as plastic or laws that are directly directed at limiting the material disposal volume. Incentives can be policies or schemes to encourage recycling or discourage producing waste. And examples of this include pay as you throw, which requires people to pay a fee to dispose of waste. Cities can institute this policy to reduce consumption of plastic and assist with waste management costs. Landfill bans. Cities can ban certain materials such as plastic from entering a landfill. Landfill bans can increase the amount of plastic that is collected and recycled and also reduce the amount of waste generated. Although landfill bans can help to bolster recycling markets, there are also potential risks, such as the risk of open dumping or other improper disposal, if the proper conditions and recycling outlets are not in place. Decision makers should fully assess and evaluate the suitability of this approach before implementing it. Um, and additionally, deposit refund schemes would be another example. So deposit refund schemes offer incentives such as payments or credits to encourage proper disposal of plastic products, such as bottles or bags. 
This scheme often in increases the value of plastic waste and may, may decrease mismanagement or littering of waste. Um, and extended producer responsibility schemes are another uh, solution that can be considered. They're typically adopted at the national level and they establish a legal requirement that producers assume responsibility for the goods that have reached the end of their useful life. So cities can set taxes on plastic manufacturers or offer subsidies for manufacturers that meet specific criteria to reduce plastic pollution. Taxes are most effective when they are high, when they're high enough to discourage consumption. Um, recycled content standards require producers to ensure that a certain percentage of their products or packaging are made from recycled content. Cities can also align their own procurement policies for government purchases with recycled content requirements. Um, and in our addressing plastic waste chapter, there's a case study about the saying no to plastic bags in Thailand, in, um, which provides an example of putting a regulation and policy strategy into action. So I encourage everyone to take a look um, at that section of the chapter when you have a moment. So moving to behavior change and educational campaigns. Um, these are an important aspect of addressing plastic waste, but they must be carefully considered and developed in order to be successful. Challenges of um, behavioral and behavior change in educational campaigns can include getting people to change their behavior is a significant can be a significant challenge. Um, limited understanding or knowledge of the negative impacts of plastic waste can limit behavior change, and consumers may be unable to change their habits due to the lack of accessible or affordable alternatives in their community, such as uh, reusable project products. And so best practices and solutions to overcome some of these challenges would uh, include influ influencing social or cultural norms, shifting social or cultural norms to consider the negative impacts of plastic waste may discourage plastic consumption and encourage proper recycling habits, encouraging the use of plastic free or reusable products and organizing environmental cleanups are an effective way to influence a given population. Um, increasing education in schools, including that information about negative impacts of plastic waste in the curriculum can encourage students to consider the global plastic waste issue starting at a young age. Um, additionally, an option to consider are targeted media initiatives. Media initiatives can reach a large audience. Social media, television, and radio are all means of effective media campaigns. And Consider a plastic free or say no to plastics campaign to discourage the use of plastics. Uh, targeted media initiatives can also help influence social or cultural norms. The environment is a key asset of the tourism industry. If plastic pollution is visible, tourists may be less likely to visit. Tourism also significantly contributes to plastic pollution. Tourism companies can play an important role in maintaining a clean environment. Engaging with local stakeholders to promote a common plan that eliminates unnecessary plastic, promotes reuse and circularity of plastics, and raises awareness of the impact of plastic among uh, staff and guests can be a great approach to consider. Increasing data collection uh, is another solution to take into account data on current consumption behaviors, current collection, sorting and disposal patterns, and products and brands that end up polluting rivers and beaches are key to effective educational campaigns. This information allows cities to provide targeted educational and, uh, and communication efforts to specific areas, populations, or industries. And in the addressing plastic waste chapter, there's a case study about investing in infrastructure and education in the Dominican Republic, which provides an example of putting a behavior change and educational campaign strategy into action. Moving to partnerships, strengthening relationships among government, NGOs, private organizations, the informal waste sector, and others engaged in the waste stream is a crucial step that cities can take to manage plastic waste. Encouraging a multi-stakeholder approach ensures that all actors in the recycling system are working toward achieving common goals. 
identifying the right partner organization can be challenging due to limited financial resources available. Partnerships may not be as effective due to a lack of enforcement of certain agreements. Both sides of the partnership must implement and uphold the agreement to ensure success. Cities may find it difficult to form partnerships if actors in the recycling system are not well connected. There is value to plastic waste if the correct partnerships can form and work together. Increasing community behaviors, perception, and awareness toward plastic waste can be combined with local concepts, policies, and infrastructure efforts to reduce plastic waste. Common partnerships can include um, private sector and government. Governments can incentivize private companies through fiscal policies to design products with recyclability in mind, substitute materials, or attract and build new recycling infrastructure or locally appropriate technology. Additionally, civil society and government partnerships, uh, governments can partner with local religious groups, schools, or other community groups to support initiatives that manage plastic waste. Governments can also partner with NGOs to support large scale initiatives that manage plastic waste, such as eliminating plastic bags or implementing structures such as river booms to intercept plastic pollution before it reaches the ocean. NGOs can partner with academia to support research efforts related to plastic waste, such as the ones called um, participatory science, informal waste sector and formal collection systems, uh, linking the informal sector workers with formal collection systems can address gaps in plastic collection. Uh, companies can partner together to improve packaging practices and move away from plastics. And um, cities can partner to share government's best practices to address plastic waste. Partnerships among cities are crucial given that plastic pollution is a cross-border issue. Plastics may leak into the environment and pollute a neighboring city. And you can find a case study about NGO partners with informal waste sector in Ghana in the plastic waste chapter, which provides an example of putting a partnership strategy into action. So in the context of solid waste management, technology can refer to basic infrastructure such as trash cans to more complicated technology requiring subject matter expertise to use, such as computer programs. Locally appropriate technology and infrastructure are crucial to maintaining a successful recycling system and mitigating the leakage of plastics. Collection, processing, sorting, and recycling of plastics are elements of the recycling system that can benefit from technology and infrastructure. Um, and challenges of this can include technology and infrastructure alone cannot be a single solution. New technology and infrastructure may require additional workers with advanced technical training to operate, maintain, and monitor equipment or transport materials. Specific and advanced technology may be necessary to recycle certain plastic resins or bio-based plastics. Many residents, especially in small jurisdictions, do not have access to regular recycling infrastructure. Without access to recycling infrastructure, plastic may be mismanaged, littered, or landfilled. Lack of access to roads and trucks to transport recycled materials also presents a challenge to collecting and recycling plastic. And funding for new locally appropriate technologies and infrastructure is also a significant challenge that cities face when trying to address plastic waste. So best practices and solutions to overcome this include detect and manage marine plastic pollution. Manta trawls, boats, and other vessels can remove plastic pollution from oceans and rivers. Drones, sonic transmitters, remote sensing satellite imagery, and webcam monitoring can be used to identify plastic pollution or detect and monitor levels of contamination of waterways and beaches. Installing stormwater and wastewater filters can prevent the leakage of microplastics into oceans and rivers. Encouraging the use of washing bags and laundry balls also helps to capture and prevent leakage of microplastics. Um, Bio-based plastics are derived from biomass, such as corn, sugarcane, wheat, or residues of other products. Bio-based plastics are commonly used for disposal, uh, disposable consumer goods, including cutlery, bowls, pots, and packaging. However, policymakers should consider the full life cycle and waste stream of any alternative materials offered to avoid creating another unmanageable waste problem. And finally, increase access to infrastructure. Um, increasing access to infrastructure 
encourages higher participation in recycling efforts. Um, access includes both infrastructure that enables more recycling as well as roads and trucks that can transport materials to be recycled or sold to end markets. By increasing access, more plastics can be captured from being mismanaged, leaked into the environment or landfilled. And a case study about private industry uh, investing in the recycled plastic supply chain in India is in the plastic waste chapter, and this provides an example of putting the strategy into action. All right, now that we've reviewed common strategies, we're going to move on to the remainder of the steps. So here we discuss steps five and six. Specifically, step five is recommending a plastic waste project. Stakeholders can use the SMART goals that uh, I went over earlier to select possible plastic waste projects, which ensure that options are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. Stakeholders can also communicate the results of their analysis to community leaders or local government representatives to help in future project planning. This way, if a community would like to implement a project in the future, they have a baseline for which approaches may work better than others. EPA solid waste management hierarchy may also help inform decision making. Options which reduce consumption and production or increase reuse of materials are most preferred. Step six is developing an implementation strategy. Developing a strategy to implement a project includes identifying specific actions, responsible stakeholders, and the timeline. The implementation strategy typically includes details on monitoring progress in order to measure the success of a project. The example challenge and solutions on the right is from the challenges and solutions matrix, where decision makers can quickly view suggested solution options to common plastic waste challenges. In this example, the challenge is high consumption of plastics, which can be remedied via campaigns to influence social norms and behaviors, partnerships with companies, for example, shifting from plastic to paper straws, and development of alternative materials which could reduce plastic consumption. Depending upon which solution or solutions are chosen, the implementation strategy will differ. In this example, the first solutions, campaigns to influence social norms, has been chosen, and several partners and their specific actions have been identified, along with estimated time timelines for implementation of those actions. For example, governments could develop educational materials and media initiatives over a six-month timeline, civil society and education. Educators, for example, community organizations, religious groups, teachers, and schools could disseminate and discuss these educational materials over three to six months. And finally, academia could research the impacts of those materials on attitudes and behaviors over one to two years. Not all implementation strategies will be the same. However, all projects will require detailed planning that identifies what specific actions partners and stakeholders will take and when. The next slide will cover securing funding for project implementation, which is often a critical challenge in project creation. So assessing um, existing financial resources and identifying any additional funding that may be required for implementation is a key step to take when deciding which strategies are best. Funding can present a significant barrier for many communities, many Cities struggle to recover costs for solid waste services and accessing external financing for capital projects can often be very complicated. To address this problem, stakeholders can use toolkit resources to help determine the cost for implementation, assist with financial readiness, and review suggestions on engaging with financial institutions. Cities can engage with other stakeholders, partners in the private sector to potentially increase funding opportunities for new locally appropriate strategies and technologies to collect plastic waste, educational campaigns to prevent plastic pollution, and establishment of take-back programs or deposit refund schemes. The risk incurred by the city or region in selecting a type of financing instrument for a plastic waste project is a key consideration of this step. Um, here we present an estimate of the relative risk for several financing instruments. In order of risk, um, we'll cover a few common financing instruments, starting with the least risky, which is grants. Grants can help offset the cost of large projects and do not need to be repaid. Sources of grants include national governments, financial institutions, and foundations. Um, we also have results-based financing, which links payment for services to the achievement of pre-agreed outcomes or targets. 
public private partnerships are cooperative agreements between sectors, which can help shift financial burden and risk from the city or region to a private company. Bonds, cities or regions can sell bonds to institutions or individuals with a promise to pay back the value and interest at a specified interval. Loans from financial institutions typically have fixed repayment rates over a set period. Loans typically require a plan to ensure terms can be met and the project is financially sustainable. For all funding types, conducting robust project planning and pre-feasibility analyses can help reduce risks. For example, it can ensure projects are appropriately sized and use adequate technologies that limit paying for more infrastructure than is necessary to achieve project goals. The next slide covers the final steps in addressing plastic waste. So following the recommendation, strategy creation, and funding of a plastic waste project, it's time to implement the project and monitor its success. Once a stakeholder develops a plan for a project, secures funding, and gathers support from other stakeholders, implementation can begin. As previously mentioned, stakeholder engagement is crucial at every stage of planning a project, but especially during implementation. Without considering cultural norms and involving key stakeholder groups, project implementation may fail. Implementation may be done by public agencies, private companies, or shared public-private partnerships. Shared implementation is often done via requests for proposals, which allow the city or region to solicit competitive bids for services and then enter into a contract agreement with the selected company. Following implementation, it is important to continuously monitor and evaluate your project and adapt plans and activities as needed. Monitoring and evaluation should occur on a regular, predetermined basis, as this will help the plan remain relevant to the city, identify areas for improvement, and can also help highlight successes of the pro program over time. Stakeholders can design metrics or performance indicators during the planning stage that help measure the success of a project. It's important to ensure that metrics are based on data that can be collected. The results of the monitoring and evaluation step can also be shared with other stakeholders and the public to demonstrate the effectiveness of the program or the steps being taken to fill gaps, as well as to build awareness and support for project uh, addressing plastic waste issues. That concludes our presentation for today. I hope that you found these tools and strategies to be useful and informative, and we encourage you to look at our solid waste management toolkit and specifically the addressing plastic waste chapter to get um, more information and details on all of these steps and strategies. At this point in time, we're going to be moving on to the facilitated discussion portion of the session. And in this portion, we'd love to hear from you and learn about projects um, that are being undertaken in your countries or regions um, to address plastic waste. And at this point in time, I'd also like to introduce my colleague, Adriana Mackey, who works uh, with me in EPA's solid waste office, the international branch, and is another lead on the solid waste management toolkit. Adriana will be helping me to keep an eye on any hands or chats and um, keep the discussion moving as we go through these next few slides. So with that, we have um, some cool questions to kind of guide our facilitated discussion for today. Um, so our first question is, which of these overarching strategies have you had the most success with in addressing plastic waste in your community? And you can see there are a few different options. We have regulation and policy, behavior change and educational campaigns, partnerships and technology and infrastructure. Um, so please take a moment to select so that we can take a look at all the results. And then I invite anyone who would like to expand on their response to raise their hand or put um, some feedback in our Q&A panel. Um, and we can give you all the chance to participate. Looking like the majority of you are selecting regulation and policy. 
behavior change and educational campaigns, and technology and infrastructure as successes. And as a reminder, if you'd like to participate in the conversation, you can feel free to raise your hand, which is you'll find the, the raise hand icon in the bottom uh, toolbar of your screen. And we'll be able to unmute you so that you can unshare so that you can share uh, an example of a strategy or a project that you've um, seen or participated in. While we're, we're, we're waiting for people to um, raise their hand, I do want to point out a really good point slash question in the Q&A box about stakeholders and partnerships in relation to policy um, and how to achieve a balanced policy when plastic industry is not engaging and governments are weaker to negotiate a balanced policy deal. I was curious if maybe folks from EPA um, and ISWA might be able to start the discussion, providing some feedback on, on that question, um, particularly in response to maybe their role within the plastics treaty and kind of what they're seeing um, in, in those discussions and how the plastic industry is participating in those discussions. Yeah, thank you for raising that, Katie. Um, I don't know if any of our ISWA colleagues wanted to address that or. Um, I know Chantel Aditi, you are on the line. Maybe you would be willing to to chime in and, and provide some initial thoughts on that. I just unmuted Margaret. If Margaret, you're able to speak, you had your hand raised. Uh, yes, I believe so. Yeah, we can hear you, Margaret. Okay, good morning, everyone, and thank you uh, for facilitating this um, ISWA EPA program. I live in the US, but the business is in Lagos. Um, Basically, the messaging must be appropriate because the messaging for recovering plastic waste to the public is about uh, there is cash in trash. So when the consumer hear cash in trash, you know, just to encourage people not to uh, dispose of their plastics indiscriminately, um, that is why they tell them that there is value in the material, but this is often misconstrued that you have to pay substantially to recover this plastic, whereby they hold on tenaciously to the plastic, looking for a huge amount to be paid in order for you to uh, collect the recyclables from them. So the messaging has to be appropriate and explained so that uh, the collector can have access to the materials instead of the um, generators looking out for some substantial amount of money to be paid for them to them before releasing uh, the materials. So that's what I'd like to see. Great, thank you so much for sharing that, Margaret. That's an excellent point um, and very good for everyone to keep in mind. Um, Adding to that, uh, one of uh, a key driver behind, um, you know, recycling plastics is to 
uh, try to recapture these uh, this plastic waste back into the value stream by creating more robust uh, recycling markets. Uh, one of our companion chapters uh, as part of the toolkit does address uh, recycling markets and uh, best strategies for and best practices for how to um, uh, encourage more pl uh, recy plastic recycling. Excuse me. Yeah, thank you very much, Adriana, for um, reminding us of that uh, recycling markets chapter. We definitely encourage everyone to take a look at that as it's very complementary to the information in the plastic waste chapter. I see that Nimi has her hand raised as well, so I'm going to unmute her. Yes, uh, I'm Nimi Damodran. I work with EPA. Um, uh, particularly on this project, I've worked on this. Um, I want to mention a digital platform that was recently introduced by the Indian government. And what they've uh, one of the issues I find with um, whether it's plastic paper is finding a market for the products and connecting the uh, recyclers to the end users or whoever wants to market these products or use the recycled products. So, um, and I don't know if Aditya or someone from India can expand on it if they know about it, uh, but GIZ helped the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs in India develop a platform that recyclers become a part of, and then they post, especially materials recovery facilities, and they post like what they have coming in into their facility and recycle, and the um, buyers of these recycle uh, material can look and then identify who has what in order to buy them. So there's like a, it's a facilitating the market, the recycling market. I don't know if any of anyone else in this uh, group has heard of something similar or know of how the India one is working. I think they're piloting it in certain cities. Yeah, thank you very much, Nimi, for um, bringing that up. It would be very interesting to hear more if anyone on the line has um, more knowledge about some examples of uh, those projects. Yeah, I'm just curious if others in the audience also have similar uh, items that have facilitated the markets. Yeah, I see a hand raised for Dr. Mansoor Ali, um, perhaps they're trying to talk about this issue, so we'll unmute them. Mansoor Ali from, from UK. Yeah, I, I regularly work with the, the, the governments and on these policies and on this specific point, um, I would say this is uh, if you select four or five potential winners, um, to achieve goals, then digital uh, exchanges and these apps are definitely the ones. So uh, G GSMA has compiled um, a very good resource on, on this. Um, uh, I was one of the co-authors and we, we, we collected 20 case studies. Most of them are on uh, digital platforms. So not, I mean, India has got quite a few, um, but then there are other countries also where they are, they, these are emerging and I definitely put it as a as a winner. So while while I'm talking about my experience very briefly, the other other four winners, in my opinion, um, one is EPR because EPR brings uh, new resources and it's a very high priority for a number of uh, governments. So that is definitely uh, one. And then the green jobs um, is, is another potential winner, in my opinion, which can because governments are very cautious about their industry and plastic lobbies can be very strong, especially importers and producers. But uh, green job and job creation is can be a priority. So we need to think more in terms of the potential winners because these projects are quite complex in nature and the tools which are prepared can very well used um, if, we, if we use them in a more sort of uh, organic way. I, I feel the, 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 the tools are, are really excellent and very well presented. So these are my comments. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for that comment. That's an excellent point. And thank you for highlighting those winning solutions as well. I think it's a great point that implementing these 
strategies in a more organic way and making sure that it's a very comprehensive approach to addressing these complicated plastic challenges is critical. Um, all right, at this time, we'll move on to the next poll question to get some feedback on that, but uh, feel free if you do have an example of a success that you'd still like to share, you're, you're welcome to raise your hand and still speak to that. Um, well, our next question is related to challenges. So of the following common challenges, which are the top three most challenging for your organization? And you can also feel free to include um, a challenge that isn't listed. If it isn't captured in the list, you can include some additional details in the text box at the bottom. Right, I'm seeing that high cost of collection and transportation oh, shortage of funding is currently our top. Uh, would love to hear from you all if there's anyone that would like to elaborate on this challenge or somebody who has found a way to um, overcome some of these challenges that are listed here in uh, your country or region, a successful project again, or if you'd like to speak a bit more about something specific that you're facing um, in relation to any of these examples. Let's see, Margaret has raised her hand again. Feel free to, um, we have you. Oh, there, I think you should be off mute now, so feel free to. Okay, so uh, the huge high cost of uh, setting up a solid waste management system and uh, infrastructure, because the cost of the beans is huge. Uh, the cost of labor is also huge. The cost of transportation, knowing and having the ability and the capacity to select the appropriate truck, either for single collection or for co-collection it's cheaper to co-collect recyclables alongside regular waste to, uh, to reduce the cost of uh, transportation and maintenance and all the other good stuff but most importantly is the cost of infrastructure especially storage systems for the both the recyclables and uh, for the regular waste Thank you for sharing that, Margaret. That's a, a great point. And I would love to hear if there's anyone on the call who would have some notes. I know that we talked a bit about um, funding in the presentation today, some strategies to approach that, but I'd love to hear if there's anyone who's had some um, direct experience or seen a project uh, where a really um, successful uh, method for obtaining funds was carried out. And I see Mohammed has uh, their hand raised. You're unmuted right now, Mohammed. Thank you, Katie, very much for the presentation and the uh, the the the, uh, the comments from my colleagues and from Adriana. Uh, I have a, a small comment or reflection on this question, which is the, um, uh, from my humble experience in, in Egypt, the idea of integrating informal sectors in the system. I think this is one of the most challenging parts in Egypt, because when we hire, you know, uh, highly professional companies for the waste collection and segregation, uh, it was very challenging and, you know, it was offensive with the informal sector that they are already in the market and it's their business, daily business. So I uh, sense that there is no one solution that fits all, especially in solid waste management. So I think in, in developing countries, we uh, it should be more about strategic planning because what happens in, 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 for example, in Egypt, not like in US, not like in South Africa, for example, there is one of the successful stories in South Africa, which is the cooperatives. 
where they uh, integrate the informal sectors in like in cooperative. They do some capacity building for those people, for those informal sector, especially for health and hygiene. And I think it was one of the uh, good practices that we uh, can refer to in developing countries. Yeah, thank you very much for raising that one on the an excellent point uh, incorporating the informal sector uh, in a productive way is critical to the success of uh, recycling programs in many countries. And uh, there is a bit more information on this in our equity in solid waste management chapter, as well as in the guide itself in the recycling section. Um, it does touch upon incorporating the informal sector uh, into your waste management strategy. So definitely encourage uh, everyone to look into that for some additional information. And I think we'll have time for what I see. Uh, Megan, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, has uh, their hand raised. Uh, no. uh, hi, sorry. Uh, I don't know if you can see the background. Can you hear the background? Uh, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, so I just wanted to share an experience of mine with a project, a kind kind of new project in Albania that um, created, generated some kind of hazardous waste that was never uh, treated or exported ever in uh, our country. And uh, for this reason, uh, we did a proper management of this hazardous waste. Uh, that involved even the government and creating and forcing the law that help on the a proper export of this waste or treatment of these weights were needed. Awesome. Thank you very much for uh, sharing that example. It's great to hear about some successful projects that have been taken uh, undertaken. Uh, and with that, we're actually. Uh, running out of time, we really appreciate everyone's contribution to this discussion today. It was great to hear from all of you a little bit more on some of the projects that you're seeing um, and challenges that you're facing. And we hope that you'll be able to refer back to some of the tools that we've highlighted today uh, as you continue to move forward and um, improve and work on these solid waste management strategies. Before we close out, we did want to present you all with um, some questions for feedback. Um, we have just a few questions to hear, hear from you on how you found this webinar to be. We'd love to hear uh, if you found it to be helpful, if you felt as though it met the learning objective. So feel free to use the Slido tool. Um, to respond to these questions. And um, you'll see after these first two questions, we also have, uh, I will use what I learned during this webinar. I will be interested in participating in future topic specific webinars. And then what did you find most helpful during this webinar? And what did you find least helpful during this webinar? So would greatly appreciate anyone who has a moment to fill out some of these questions. Again, we greatly uh, appreciate your participation today. Thank you again to um, ISWA for collaborating with us to host this webinar. And thank you to our APT associate colleagues for uh, all of their efforts in helping to get this session ready today.